Hello guys, my name is Jonathan and I'm here with a short message about being born again. What it means to be born again, right? Because um, I, I'm, I'm going to open up the scripture right here where Jesus says you must be born again, right? So you guys can go to chapter, John chapter 3 verse 1 with me. We'll read a few verses. It says, There was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. After a dark one evening, he came to speak, to, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said, We all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean, exclaimed Nicodemus? How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants, just as you can hear the wind, but can't tell where it comes from or where it is going. So you cannot explain how people are born of the spirit. So what does this mean to be born again? It means to be born of the spirit. But what does that mean? What does it mean to be born of the spirit? So this is something that we have to understand, right? We're born one time of the flesh, right? When we're born, we're born carnal, deathly, and rebellious when we're born. So the, so the moment that we're born, we're born with the nature inherited from Adam, full of sin, full of rebe again, full of rebellion, full of wickedness because of what Adam and Adam and Eve did. So we inherited that sinful nature. It's, it's, a, it's a seed that's been planted uh, by Adam, and then now it's, it's passed through the whole, uh, generation to generation to generation, now, and now to modern day to us, right? It's, it's going to keep past, keep, it's going to keep being passed down as the generations come forward. So that's what it means to 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 be born of the of the natural mind, right? To be born of the carnal mind is to be born of the mind of rebellion, of of of, uh, of wickedness, right? When you're whenever whenever you see a kid, you don't have to teach them how to be rebellious. They already know how to be rebellious. They already know, oh, you know, to be greedy. They already know to lie. They already know how to uh, to to hate people, right? By by nature, they they they, they get greedy. Um, they get prideful by nature. They want what they want. It's by nature. We're we're like that. Because because of the sinful nature that we have inherited from Adam. So that, again, that's what it means to have the carnal mind. The carnal mind is a mind that is against God. That's what it means. Carnality is anything that is against God's will. And so, and because it's against God's will, that means it's, it's demonic. So the carnal mind is actually a demonic mind because it's against the will of God, right? And the Bible says that the carnal mind can never, um, the, the flesh, right? And the carnal mind can never produce righteousness. It can never produce the things that God desires. The carnal mind is at war against God. The carnal mind, the, the, the sinful mind, the sinful flesh is always at war against God. It never d did God's, wa God's will and it never will. And it never produced righteousness that pleased God and it never will produce righteousness that pleased God because it's rebellious. It's full of sin and, and evil. That's what it's full of. And again, that's, that's the first mind. That's the carnal mind that we're born with, right? And, and, and so this is the way I explain this to, to a lot of people as well is that if you, if, you, if you meet somebody who's been blind their entire life, right? They, they were born blind, never seen anything in their whole life. And, and you try to explain color to them, right? You try to explain, what is the color red? Well, you would say, okay, well, the color red is a rose. It's, okay, what does that look like? Well, it looks like this. And what does that look like? Well, oh, the color red is like, you know, um, it's like really v vibrant. It's, it's really bright. Well, what does that look like? I've never seen that before. So you're going to keep going down rabbit holes because their mind, right, has never seen it. Their mind has never experienced it. Their eyes have never seen that. So that so you can even if you keep going down rabbit holes, they'll never see or they'll never actually understand what you're saying. It's gonna it's gonna keep going down rabbit holes and rabbit holes. You see what I'm saying? So that that's the carnal mind. That's the mind you're born with, car in, in, in carnality, right? So um, I have notes right here, and it says the carnal mind can't receive spiritual things because the things of the spirit are foolishness to him, right? Um, it would be like trying to explain color to someone who's been blind their entire life. So like I said. It's like you're trying to explain something that's unexplained that, that somebody cannot see. They can't see that, but you're trying to explain it to them, even though it would be impossible for them to see it with those eyes. So the carnal eyes cannot see the things of God, right? It's foolishness to him. It's, it's, it's literally dumb to, 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 the, to the person who's carnal. It's dumb. It sounds foolish to, to, to say anything spiritual to somebody who's carnal. Um, so yeah, so, and, and then I have right here. Likewise, until the carnal man receives the Holy Spirit, right? So just like, or like, like, just like the colorblind person, and until they actually, or the person who's blind, until they could see something, until they had their eyes open to see, right? Until they could see, they would not be able to understand. So in the same way, until the carnal man can see, he's not going to understand the things of the spirit until he can see, right? But I'm not talking about with these eyes. I'm talking about your spiritual eyes, right? So um, it says, likewise, until the carnal man receives the Holy Spirit, they can't understand the ways or the patterns of the spirit. Right, so because the man, the, because the carnal man can't see the things of the spirit, how can a carnal man know the things of the spirit until they receive the spirit? It's impossible. So, um, 
That's why they have to receive the Holy Spirit to understand the things of spirit, to understand the things of God, to understand his wisdom and his ways and his knowledge, to understand the ways in which God works, to understand the ways in which God in, in which God um in, in his majesty, to, under, to understand his beauty, to see his beauty rightly, right? So, and, and until then, they can't see it rightly. The Holy Spirit is God's breath, right? Bring, breathe into you. And until that happens, your spirit is dead. So we're born with a sinful, like I said, sinful nature. Our spirit is already dead when we're born. We're born already dead. We're already born in trespass. We're born already on the road to damnation. The moment we're born, we're placed. And it's not like, oh, we have a choice to be good or not. We're born and we're already evil. We're, we're born and we're already on the path to destruction. It's a wide path that many will find. And the righteous one is a, is a narrow path that few will find. Why? Because very few people want to walk the life that Christ is calling them to walk. Very few people want to walk the righteous lifestyle that God is calling us to. Very few people want to walk the way that Jesus demands us to. He says, if you love me, you obey my commandments. So what he's saying is, if you really love me, if you really want to obey, if you really want to follow me, if you really want to chase after me, you you have to obey what I say, but most, but a lot of people don't want to because they want to live their same lifestyle. But let me keep going. Um, so again, we're born with a dead spirit. We're, we're born dead. Our spirit is dead. Our spirit man is not alive. We're born completely dead. And because of that, because we're born completely dead, we cannot reach up to God. What does that mean? It means that we had no ability in ourself at all, like zero ability to ever reach to God and do enough good things to earn righteousness. It, we, had, we had zero ability to do that because our spirit is dead and a dead man can't grab, a dead man can't work. A dead man can't even do anything righteous. You're dead, you're completely gone in the water. So how, how could you ever reach up to God being dead? It's impossible, right? So because we're born dead with, with a dead spirit, right? Rebellious and sinful, because we received the nature of the first man, Adam, um, we bear his image of sin and death. So because we're born with that sinful nature, we're, we bear the image of sin and death. So um, the family resemblance that we bear is the family of Adam, which again is sin. It's, it's, it's demonic and it's dark, right? That, that's the image that we bear by nature because we inherited his nature. So so all we can do is bear the image, meaning meaning what we can, meaning the, the character, right? the image is the character that we bear is nothing but sin and destruction. That's the character we bear by nature because Adam was rebellious and he, and he gave us the seed of destruction. He gave us a seed of sin that was passed down through generations, right? So, but, right, that's the carnality, but the Holy Spirit what, what, is, what is the Holy Spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit is God's Spirit brought down to earth. Jesus said, it's better if I ascend so I can leave you the helper, the Holy Spirit. It's better if I, if I go so the Holy Spirit can come. Why? Because, because now, the, now God can, can be ever present in all people at one time. Jesus is only one person, right? He's God, of course, but he's only one person. But the Holy, when he ascended, he gave us a spirit. So now the spirit can roam around the entire earth at one time, teaching us all the truth, to give, giving us all comfort, giving all of us the, the, the direction that we need to follow God, right? The, giving us all the direction in a way that is omnipresent. That's the Holy Spirit's job. Um, and so the Holy Spirit, again, God's spirit, so when, whenever we, we, we confess Jesus Christ Lord and believe in our heart that God raised from the dead and we are saved and we're born, we're born of the Spirit, we're born again, what happens is we receive Him and now we receive the second nature, right? Because the first Adam, his nature was sin and death. And because of that, it, we, we, we produce destruction, right? But now with the Holy Spirit, we can produce the righteous nature of Christ because, because the Holy Spirit's job is to give us the new nature. The Bible says strip off all the old carnal the carnal things, strip off all the old things in which you inherited from Adam to put on the new righteousness that Christ has given you, that, you, that you've been given as a, as a son or a daughter when you were adopted, when you confess Christ as Lord. Now you put on that new nature so that way you can, you can live a life of righteousness, clothe yourself in righteousness, cloak yourself in the holiness of God, right? That, that's how you live a life of, of being born again, being born of the spirit. Um, so look, I'm, I'm gonna keep going with this one right here. Um, so, the Holy Spirit is us receiving the na this nature of the second Adam, Jesus Christ. The first Adam was the firstborn of all humankind that would eventually die because of sin. So he was, he was the firstborn among many brethren. Adam was the firstborn among many brethren who would die because of sin. But Jesus is the firstborn, right? He's, he's the new family line. The new family tree was started by Jesus. He's the firstborn of all humankind who will all live eternally because of his righteousness. So because he, right, the Bible puts it this way in the book of Romans. It says, through one man's disobedience, many became sinners. 
but through another man's obedience, many became righteous. And it says, if, 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 if sin and death reigned in the old man, Adam, if sin and death reigned in the old covenant, how much more will grace and life reign in the new covenant through the blood of Jesus Christ? How much more will the grace of God rule over us now in the new covenant that we've been given through the blood of Jesus? Because his blood is so powerful. It's, his blood is so, is so pure and so holy. His blood has so much power in it that we are, we are no longer slaves to our sin anymore because he died. He died to the, the, the law died died whenever Jesus died on the cross because he fulfilled the law and put it to death. And now we no longer have to live according to law, but now we live according to the Spirit. We're not, now we live according to what the Holy Spirit dictates in our hearts, which is righteousness that comes from Christ. Um, so Jesus is the firstborn of, of all humankind who will all live eternally because of his righteousness. When we receive the Holy Spirit, we receive Jesus' nature and remove Adam's nature. That's, that's again, we, we put on righteousness of Christ, his nature, right? We now... Now we strip off the old, we put his nature on, and now we can bear the image of righteousness. So God, well, I'm, I'm going to say that right now. Give me a second. <clears throat> we are born as sinners, but we die. So we're born in sin, and then, but then we have to die with Christ so that we can rise a new man, right? Because the only way to resurrect with Christ is that you die first. The only way to come back up with Jesus is that you die first. That's the only way. There's no other way to come back up with Jesus Christ if you don't die first. And, and that's why he says, if you, if you want to join, the Bible says, if you want to join him with his resurrection, you have to join him first in his death. If we want to join him in glory, we have to first join him in suffering because we can't have the glory without the suffering first. If Jesus, if we're supposed to be followers of Jesus and he was suffering for the glory, then we have to suffer for the glory too we have if jesus was pruned if he was tested in temptation to in, in, in order to go to the cross then we have to also be tested in order to go to the suffering that is coming up but guess what the end of that suffering is a hope that there's glory coming the new bodies are promised to us and, and now we don't we don't look to this world and fear it anymore we don't we don't live to the fear of we don't slave to the fear of dying anymore but now we, we we slave to righteousness now we slave to holiness because jesus has given us his nature to bear the image of love you see what i'm saying um we are born as sinners, but we die so that we can be born of righteousness. This is what it means to be born again, to strip off the first nature that we bore and to put on the new nature, um, the nature of Christ. Adam bore the, the image of sin and death. Jesus bears the image of righteousness. To be born of spirit means to receive the new mind and nature. The Bible calls Adam... Um, the earthly man and Jesus the heavenly man. So Adam is the earthly man. What does that mean? He's the man of the earth. He's the man that's focused on the things of this world. He's the man that has his sights set on the things of, the, of this world, the vain, empty things of this world, the things of this world that have vanity, the things of this world that are nothing but chasing the wind. That's that's the that's the earthly man, Adam, who had the thought process of the of carnality. Who his thinking mind, his mind that was thinking was thinking nothing but carnality. That's the that's the earthly man, the man of the earth. But Jesus is the heavenly man. The Bible says Jesus is the second Adam the heavenly Adam who came down to restore righteousness. Adam, his, again, his disobedience produced sin, but the, but, the, but the righteousness of Christ produces life in us. The earthly man focuses on things of the earth. The heavenly man focuses on things of heaven. So the earthly man stores up his treasures here. The earthly man stores up his treasures on this earth, but the heavenly man stores up his treasure above, right? When we're, if, if, we're, if we want to examine whether we're the earthly or the heavenly man, we have to examine whether we're storing our treasures here on earth or whether we're storing them in heaven. Are, are we doing things to be looked at here? Are we doing things so people can praise us here? Or are we doing good things so that God can praise us, so that God can see us? Are we doing things in private? Or are we doing things in public to, for, to be, for people to praise us? That, that's, that's the difference between the two minds, the earthly and the, and the heavenly. Because when you focus on the, on the earthly person, it's selfishness. You're if it's foc focused on me, 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 me. I get my own glory, my own fame. I get the praise. I get what I want. But the heavenly man focuses on things above. And it, but if you focus on things above, you focus on the Father's will. Because Jesus lived a life perfectly to the Father's will. Jesus, the, he the heavenly man, lived a life perfectly to the will of the Father. He was never focused on himself. He was never focused on me, 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 I, I, I. He was focused on the Father. He said, Father, your will be done, not my own. That's how the, earth the heavenly man works in his mind. That's how the heavenly man works in the thought processes of his mind. Is he governs? his mind by the holy spirit so he doesn't think about things of earth but he thinks about things of heaven the bible says govern your mind by the spirit and you will produce life govern your mind by the spirit and you will produce a, a harvest of peace and you will be called a peacemaker but if you produce nothing but death it's because your mind has been governed by the flesh if you produce nothing but car uh, uh, but nothing but sin it's because your mind has been covered by your carnality you have to strip off the old put the new on put your born again nature on and strip off the nature that you were born with you, the, you're born with and now you have to be born again you're born with and now you have to be be born one more time of the spirit of life right um earth is temporary and will be burned 
Heaven is eternal and no man can touch it. So when you're focused on the things of this earth, you have to understand that you're focused on things that will be burned one day. These, the things, the glory, the money, the fame, I mean, you name it, it'll be burned one day. All these things, all these are going to be burned to ashes. And what also what happens is whenever you focus on the things of this earth, you're so focused on, 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 on the things of this planet that you forget about your eternity because, because the devil has you blinded. The devil has you blinded to think that this world is where your life is hidden. But the Bible says your life is hidden in Christ with God. You no longer live as a citizen in this world you're a foreigner in this world and you're a citizen of heaven you no longer live for the things and the pleasures of this world you live now to, to glorify the lord jesus christ even though it means suffering even though it means trial and tribulation if you love him if you truly care about him if you truly in this for his glory you're going to endure it because it's not about oh getting what i want it's not about me being in pain and being in pity but what it's about is saying god you get the glory god i'm going to endure it because you're worthy of all my praise you're worthy of my life laid down you're worthy of my life sacrifice on the altar i'm going to put my life on the altar i'm gonna i'm gonna live as a living offering i'm gonna i'm gonna be poured out like a liquid offering unto your glory god i'm willing to pay the price that comes with living for jesus i'm willing to pick up my cross and follow after you lord god right I'm, uh, this, and this is the last thing that i'll say too like this is, a, this is the last point i have right here if sin and death i said this earlier if sin and death reign in the first covenant because it was based on man's own strength how much more will life and righteousness reign now through God's faithfulness? The law has been put to death because one came and fulfilled the law perfectly unto death. So now when we follow Christ's example, we naturally fulfill the law. So now, like the law, right? The, the law was given to us, right? The law was given to us, not so we can see it and say, oh, I have to follow it perfectly. But the law was given to us so that we can see that we're all guilty before God. The law was never, made to, was never meant to make us righteous. It was only meant to show us that we're unrighteous. But people looked at it. And, and they thought the law can make me righteous, so that's why they try to follow it. But every time they try to follow it perfectly, they were condemned because it was impossible. Because there was too many of them. There was too many things to do, so they were bound to fall into something. So whenever they looked at the law and tried to follow it perfectly, they were condemned in their sin. Because they were bound, they were bound to, 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 not be, to not be able to be fulfill it, to fulfill it, right? They were bound to that. But, but, but we have to understand is the way that God makes us righteous has always been by the same thing. It's never been different. Even when God, God gave the law, it was still the same way that people were made righteous. It was still the same exact way. And the way that people are made righteous is through faith. It's the exact same way. It's never changed. It's always been like that. From, from the time of Adam, I mean, from the time of, of Abraham to the time of Jesus, I mean, every t all throughout eternity when God made us, it's always been my faith. And what is faith? Faith means that you believe in the one you cannot see because of the things you can see. Faith means that you believe in what you can't see so that you can experience the things that were unseen before. So the more you, so when you have faith in Jesus, you're going to see him in you. First, it starts with me having faith in the Lord Jesus and I can't see his works in me. I can't see it, right? I have to believe that the Holy Spirit can fill me with the love of God. I can't see it at first, but it's me just believing it. But then after I believe it, the faith comes and manifests itself in reality. And what that means is now through faith, when I keep walking with Christ, I'm being pruned. My character is being pruned and now I'm bearing the image of Christ. That's what it means for us to have the image of God. Right. So and again, this all comes back to being born again. When God made us in the garden, he made us in his image. Right. And what is what does that mean? That means his character. The book of the I think it's the book of Hebrews or Colossians that says that Christ is the, is the very radiance of God, the very character of God expressed in human form. What that means is that Christ is the image of God and uh, is the visible image of the invisible God. He is the image of God. And, and who is Christ? Christ is love. Jesus is love because God is love. So God came down in flesh. Love came in flesh. So God came in flesh as in the form of Jesus. So Jesus is love, right? So that's what you have to understand. And so the image we were made to bear was always to be, is, is, was always to love, to love others and to be loved by God. So love was always the thing that God made us for. But sin came and ruined that, right? We, we know the story. Sin came and ruined that. But guess what? Now God has restored the image back to us. The Holy Spirit's job is that the image of God will be back imprinted into our spirits. The, the, Holy, the Holy Spirit's job is that he brings back the imprint in which we were made to, 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 um, to bear. That's, that's the Holy Spirit's job, that he comes and fills us with love so that we can live the life that God predestined us to live. The Bible says those he foreknew, he, pre, he predestined, and he, and he chose before the foundation of the world to become like the image of Christ, to become like his son, to bear the image of his son, right? So that his son would be the firstborn of many to rise from the dead. So now when we, when we, when we believe in Jesus, Jesus, we also rise from the dead with him. 
So yeah, that's what it means to be born again. The, and the basic principle of it is you're born once of carnality, meaning you're born with the image of sin. You're born bearing sin and through sin, death. But now through Christ, Christ came to restore our image and now we receive his spirit so we can be born again. Our eyes can be open. Our spiritual eyes can be open. And now we can, we can see God. We can experience God. And no longer are the things of God foolishness, but now the things of God are the wisdom that we've always wanted. So that's what it means to be born again. I hope that helped you guys. Um, I, ho I hope that it brings revelation to you guys because th th this right here is something that we have to understand what it means to be born again. Right, I know this is a long teaching. You could probably you could probably do it shorter, but I, I wanted to go in depth about what it really meant to to truly have the born again experience. Because um, understanding that is so important. Because Jesus says, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Being born of spirit, being born of the water, the living waters of heaven. Right, being born of the spirit. So if you, when, when you put when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, when you when you say, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sin, that He shed His blood to wash me. He said He shed His blood and His blood washes me. Right, that He wrote that He that He was buried in a tomb after He died, and three days. Later, he rose from the dead. He ascended into the heaven. He seated, he seated at the right hand of, the, of God the Father. And the Holy Spirit will come and, and fill you if you ask of him. The Bible says, Jesus says, uh, if, you earth, if you earthly fathers, you, if, if, you, if you evil fathers know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask of him? So when you, when you, when you ask the Lord, please baptize me in your spirit. Give me your Holy, give me your spirit, God. God will give you his spirit. And now your eyes can, open, can be open to understanding. But it takes faith. You have to have faith. You have to believe that it's possible. Believe that God can do it. And God will do it every time. So I hope that helps you guys out. Bear the image of Christ, which is love. Put on Christ, take off the old Adam, put the new Adam on, take off the earthly man and put the heavenly man on in Jesus' name. Love you guys.